here was a major catastrophe in America. I guess the worst that we've ever had, and there would be no investigation of this catastrophe. This is not an ordinary election. People around this country understand that Cynthia stood up and stood out for them. And that's why they're sending all this money. They're sending $10, $15, $20, $100, $500, $1,000. They're sending money in here that we have never received before like this. And the reason for it is that people around the country understand. They understand what the Bush administration is doing. They understand what Ashcroft is doing. They understand what civil liberties are and that we're losing civil liberties and that the police can come and arrest you without a warrant. They can hold you. And I mean, people in America are not the dumbest folks in the world. They understand what this country is and they understand where it was and they understand where it's going now. And where it's going now is dangerous. Ashcroft is the most dangerous person in this country. Though it might not be in my backyard, if I don't take care, sooner or later it will be. So we can't isolate incidences and say, well, it's not about me, it doesn't affect me, as long as me and my house is saved and I'm not worrying about other people because that's foolish. We can't close our eyes, shut our ears, and shut our mouth as they're trying to get Congresswoman to do. So she has to be willing to take a risk, and she's a risk taker. She says what she has to say, and she doesn't sugarcoat it. And I think that we need a lot more politicians who are willing, who have the courage to just say, tell the story exactly the way they see it. When things that, I, that are important to me and that are important to my family who live in rural Georgia uh, are affected, then those are the kinds of issues that I try to watch. I like the fact that She's, uh, if I could use a, another civil rights fighter's phrase, unbossed and unbought. And I'm doing this because I believe very strongly in what uh, Congressman McKinney has been doing. And she's like a breath of fresh air in the, uh, in the Congress. The first time in almost 50 years of voting that I've actually gotten involved in a, in a campaign. And I'm very proud to be associated with Congresswoman McKinney. I like her um, inquisitive open-mindedness on the Middle East, and uh, I'm finding that endorsements by um, groups that I've supported over the years, like um, uh, National Abortion Rights Action League and the League of Conservation Vot Voters and Sierra Club, who I see coming in and calling in here, um, I find that she is very much in support of issues that I have supported for years and years. I like her outspokenness. She's a very uh, honest person person, very strong personality, which I like, and she gets things done with that strong personality. In order for us to have a uh, strong county, a great nation, we have to prepare children. And in that area, she's been very active, bringing federal monies for uh, uh, Head Start and those programs that we need in this county. When you say leave no child behind, and you're willing to give vouchers to erode the public school system, then you're going to leave a lot of children behind. Whenever I called on the Congresswoman, she came out and personally spoke to individual students. She spoke to small and large groups of students. She was just there for us. Whatever she, information that she receives in Congress, she brings it back to the community. Whether it's something that most people like or dislike, it's information that the, the, the voters need to know about and be informed on. Well, I like Cynthia McKenna. I like what she stands for because I feel like she have done a good job for her community. Because people come out overwhelming to vote for Congresswoman Cynthia McKinney, so people come asking to get on your ticket, and she's always, she works very hard to make sure those who are willing to serve our community, she helps them to get in through the door. She's always very instrumental 
and helping us to move forward and taking, taking more advantage of this political uh, process. She doesn't fight for corporations. She doesn't fight for corporations. They have enough people in Congress. They got 400, they got 534 people to fight for corporations. She fights for the people. Her concern for the elderly, uh, her concern for honesty in government, which is sorely lacking, as we can see, um, and just the fact that she's there as a watchdog over uh, some of the things that are going on in Congress today is worth my time being here. Anybody with a brown skin will be under investigation from here on in until we put the Bush administration out of office. speak for a moment as uh, a mother of a 16-year-old son. There is no way that um, we can watch what happened in Inglewood passively. Black life is so often cut short so early. And this is the richest country on the planet. And why is it that these things continue to happen? And we stand for fairness and justice. And we face every day an attorney general in the Justice Department who is doing just the opposite. Well, the perception seems to be that the Black Caucus is largely ineffective. Is that, why is that? I mean, that you don't get things done. That's interesting. It is a daily battle. It's a battle that don't get covered by the media. Uh, no matter how many press conferences we have, no matter how many releases we have, we rarely see it anywhere but the weekly African-American print uh, throughout the country. Our theme is no permanent enemies, no permanent friends, just permanent interest. As journalists, I would like you to know that these documents exist, and I would hope that you would write about them, and write about the history of COINTELPRO this information became declassified in 1999. Discusses the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. This is three years before Dr. King was actually killed. Somewhere in the Negro movement at the top, there must be a Negro leader who is, quote, clean, who could step into the vacuum and chaos once Dr. King has been eliminated from the scene. Somehow or other, Martin Luther King must be removed from the leadership of the Negro movement that is here in this document. I would like for you to put in your search engines Operation Lantern Spike. Please consider that in light of what is happening today with the legislation that has already passed the USA Patriot Act, and in light of Homeland Security legislation, which is about to be passed. One thing I can tell you for certain, Cynthia McKinney does her homework. When she says something, if she's quoted correctly, she can back it up. Because she does her homework. She's one of the brightest members. I am so happy to be here today so that we can provide you with the real information so that you can report it to the people, to the community. And yes, I am a fighter. I am a fighter for freedom. I am a fighter for justice. And I am a fighter for dignity. And I will not stop fighting for those things. At the same time, the people who elected me did not send me to Washington, D.C. to blend into the woodworks. Right. Our community is in need of representation, yes. and I intend to do just All that. Right. Thank All you very right. much. All right. We strongly stand with her. We strongly endorse her. It's clear to me that the Republicans are making a, a false play to try to get uh, Jewish uh, support, which is unfortunate because some of the most uh, anti-Semitic statements and attitudes that I've experienced has come from that end of the spectrum. I have to admit that I have, I wasn't much, 
I didn't respect politics and government too much in that um, I thought all of them were crooks. Now I know at least we have one that is not. But we do have the same forces that are saying that here's a woman we've got to put out of office. We can't leave her in office as a maverick. We got to put her out. And so a woman though has to enter the conversation and not be afraid that what she says will be criticized by men, criticized by the media, and criticize or make her family to feel ashamed. Because if women can't have a part of the conversation, our whole world will suffer. What I think her um, detractors fear is they just don't want an independent-minded, outspoken, strong black woman to be in Congress. She um, speaks her mind, she doesn't do what others may want her to do unless she feels like uh, it's the right thing to do. And that's what frightens her enemies. I've heard her making a stand and uh, wanting to look into uh, what was the true cause of, uh, did we have uh, information? So that right there says in itself that she wants to go uh, above and beyond and uh, get to the, to the bottom. Uh, problems that may exist in even government, you know, taking that challenge and that stand to say, well, here, we're a voice for the people and we want to stand up and let's find out. When nobody said anything. The Bush administration didn't say anything. Nobody in Congress said anything. So she was frustrated. So she says, why don't we have an investigation? What caused 9-11? What preceded 9-11? And I don't want people to forget that Cynthia McKinney was reporting the work that she does. She's on the International Relations Committee. And she was reporting from the committee the things that she saw happening. Uh, Cynthia McKinney has also been in Congress for a decade. We know the Republican Party wouldn't have said anything, but the Democratic Party didn't say anything. I mean, the Democratic Party is a opposition party and when a party that's in power makes a mistake you're supposed to you're the opposition you're supposed to take advantage of a mistake made by the by the incumbent party look at what they did to Clinton for nothing but they made it a major issue and spent five or six million dollars investigating Clinton for sex now here was, here, was, here was a major catastrophe in America. I guess the worst that we've ever had, and there would be no investigation of this catastrophe. And she said, who will benefit from a war? And she started to enumerate the corporations that were associated with Cheney and George Bush. Her being outspoken, her being not afraid to speak, um, brought these things to light earlier than um, would have if, if, if they would have been to light, brought to light at all. Um, but yes, even a lot of people in labor still supported her, but sort of cringed at first until um, she was uh, vindicated. Labor is giving her full support. Yeah, she's a labor, she's a labor candidate, she's a labor Congresswoman. We keep score sheets on all of the uh, voting records of all of the uh, people in Congress and the Senate. And she has, ever since she's been in the Congress, she has voted a hundred percent with us on every issue. Now you don't get very many representatives up in Washington that vote for labor all the time. I mean, we consider people that are vote 60, 70 percent as being friends of labor, but she's 100 percent. So that's why it's real important for us to keep her, labor people, to keep her in Congress. And I think that a lot, a lot of labor, white and black, realize that and, and support her because of, of, of that one fact. Thank you to all of you 
because my dad is absolutely right that in 1992, mm -hmm. it was just a dream. Go to Washington and represent the people, not the special interests, not the corporations, to represent the people. The laborers in Augusta, the boiler makers in Savannah, the letter carriers all over the 22 counties, and all of the other unions who were the only folks who stood by me other than the Sierra Club and the National Organization for Women. It was you in 1992 that created all of this. Now. <laughs> she sits and listens to uh, the complaints of uh, the working people. And she goes out and she addresses uh, the subjects that we discuss which is the problems that uh, the working people are having, not only uh, in labor, but all around the state of Georgia and all around the country. So we uh, from CWA would like to thank Cynthia McKinney for all the work that she has done over the years that she has been in Congress. continue to be our champion for us in Washington. Am I correct? to do is to put together the real rainbow coalition that whose wings were eclipsed by J. Edgar Hoover and the federal government with the COINTELPRO program. And if we can do that, put to, putting together the real rainbow coalition, then I know that our issues that concern us about dignity and justice and peace and freedom in this country and around the world will be protected and our priorities will be reflected not just in my uh, primary in August but in the general election in November. She loves her community. She loves her country. She shows it by performing. Her performance in my opinion is second to none. I think she, she do a good job. She speak her mind. She ain't worried about it. She fighting for the people. She doing that. She doing that. So she doing a good, pretty good job. Cynthia didn't support Congresswoman Barbara Lee and her opposition to Bush's war in Afghanistan. Cynthia took my advice and I told her to vote for it. And the reason I told her was, was that she and I have been outcasts for years. And I said that you might not want to be an out, continue to be an outcast. I told her, she took my advice for once in her life and voted for the resolution. But, but now she has voted against all them other Israeli resolutions. She just saying, you know, 
she she voted that that way and left left uh, the lady out there probably out there by herself. She she should not have done it. Her principle was to vote with Marvin Lee. She did that with me because I said you ought not to. I mean, it's time for us to come in the house. It's time. Well, I mean, we've been outside of the political arena all these years. So it's time for us to come in. And I was wrong. I had no idea that I was so wrong. I won't vote for her and I don't want the community to vote for her because she, she's for the right thing, she speaks for the right thing, so I think she's the one that we should have in the office. For her ability to talk about transportation, her ability to bring forth the issue of the environment, education, uh, the issues of veterans. I'm a veteran. I think it's critical that we have to deal with the issues of veterans in this country. I like the way that she's done to bring federal monies to deal with the issues of economic development in the county. Citizens who are on retirement uh, have lost so much of their income because of the shenanigans going on by corporate America. And that really sickens me. It's something, something needs to be done about it. And I'm sure that uh, when uh, Congresswoman McKinney is reelected, I think that uh, she will take a she will take the lead in trying to address some of these issues. The way it's going now is dangerous. Ashcroft is the most dangerous person in this country. Probably the most dangerous person in the world. He's a he's a a Nazi. Ashcroft is a Nazi. I just thank God for, for having a black woman such as her because, you know, it made me feel more comfortable when I found out that someone knew about the bombing and she brought it out and that was just wonderful and she stood by her word and how can you not trust a woman like that? So that's all I have to say, but I will be voting for her. I have no problem voting for her. You know, I just want to... Uh, be a part of something that's that's for a good cause and I can look back and say well I was a, a part of that to my kids and show them how to how to uh, grow up and have some uh, dignity and you know respect about the community and about themselves Oh, no, still it was larger than life. She was honest, smart, streetwise, pensive, yet playful. That's why I can say without a doubt that Billy taught me how to live. After I came back from a humanitarian mission to Gaza, but instead having spent seven days in an Israeli prison, I went on a nationwide tour to tell interested communities what had happened to me. At the Seattle airport, a supporter who has now become my friend paid me the highest compliment. She told me that I was alive. I thought long and hard about that because honestly, much to my father's chagrin, there are so many people in our community who passed their days just marking time instead of making a difference. Billy knew that it was within our capacity to materially change our conditions if we would only do what is required. He knew that because he did that. And somehow he transmitted that faith in our fellow human beings to me and he taught me to be free. My father also taught me how to love. I've learned from my own experiences that it's easy for us Americans to think that we can just order love and pick it up in the drive through window. But through this journey with my father, I've learned to appreciate the African and Asian views of love, that its touch is so deep to our core as human beings that it is unquantifiable. It is undefinable, and it is what helps give meaning and depth to our core when we find it. Billy taught 
agape love on two levels. He taught me the kind of love that would risk his job to challenge police brutality, that would challenge racism and discrimination, that would give away my Christmas gift of an etch of sketch the day after Christmas to a needy child in Bowen home. And so I learned to love my community because every action in my father's being showed me how to do that. I learned to love humanity because I saw my father grow in his own attitudes and admit that he was wrong about gays and apologize to them in 1996 when he saw their dedication to me after I was forced into a bruising legal battle just to remain in Congress. And it was only the white gay community in Atlanta that would cross the racial marginal line that had canceled the road out in Decatur and come into my campaign headquarters and fold letters and stuff envelopes and answer phones and do whatever was necessary to help me win re-election in a vast and redrawn district. And I did win in a hotly contested race. My father loved people. He sacrificed too much in the way of personal wants, and his family sacrificed too, because his focus wasn't only on us, it was on his beloved community too. But he has been unfairly smeared by special interests in this town who want to preserve their interests at the expense of yours. And my father was not about to sacrifice your interests. In my car that you had a protector, and I know you all know that. And so when the American Israel Public Affairs Committee and other aspects of the pro-Israel lobby in this country, including their supporters right here in Georgia, targeted me for defeat, my father came to my rescue 
one day at the hospital, he was so uncomfortable. He was really uncomfortable. 